What's going on? And we're back. Today I'm joined by uh, someone that I'm sure you've seen the meme going around. Uh, you know, uh, from El Buki to, uh, from Spooky to El Buki. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, of the very talented. Uh, some of you guys might know him from uh, the hit series on Netflix, On My Block. Uh, some of y'all might know him for the Selena Netflix series. The incredible Julio Macias is on the show today. How are you doing today, man? What's up, homie? Thank you so much for having me, bro. I saw the interview that you did with Pete, and I was just like, yo, this is for la gente. We got we to gotta jump on in on this. Man, look, man, I'm so glad that you say that, man. So let me kind of give everybody a quick backstory on how we connected. Uh, so you played Fidel Studio on the Selena Netflix series. I happened to interview the real Fidel Studio a couple weeks ago. And you you saw the interview and you took time out of your day to not only uh, watch the interview, but to retweet the interview. And we connected, we exchanged messages and talk about Latinos supporting Latinos. You embody that. So, I, I, you know, I just have to I have to let you know how much I appreciate you taking time not only to do the interview, but also to support what I was doing, you know? Yeah, man, absolutely. The, it's uh it's really interesting. You know, I, I was born in Mexico City and I, and I did move to the States until I was about eight, nine years old. And uh, when you're it's 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 really interesting to have conversations with my friends who are uh, Mexican-American or Latinos born in the United States. And then the ones that come, you know, the ones that are born here are and, and it's rightfully so want to be heard, want to be seen, want to be like acknowledged as unique, but also part of the United States or part of part of the culture. And you see a lot of uh, immigrants come in and try to assimilate as quickly as possible. You know, that was kind of my whole thing when I first came here. Uh, I wanted to speak English, how other people spoke English. I wanted to, you know, skateboard. I wanted to like almost be white, you know, Uh, and it wasn't until much later in life, you know, uh, after I graduated uh, high school and then once I got to college and started traveling and obviously now acting that I'm like, yo, it's crazy how scared I was to be just myself, you know, and how important it is to now uh, be unique, you know, be Mexican and proud, be Chicano and proud, you know, uh, tell kids that it's like, Hey, whether you're born here or you're coming here, continue being you, because that's what makes the melting pot amazing. And that's why, you know, the culture is so good and tastes so good. and, And everyone wants to come to the United States besides all the, issues and problems that are going on right now, you know, um, be yourself, you know, that, that, that's something that took me a while to, to sort of, uh, own up and own into. Well, you know, again, I appreciate you joining us. You know, one thing about me starting this video platform, you know, I decided to start it officially uh, through YouTube about a year ago. And I didn't realize how much there's a void for this type of content for our people. You know, the fact that there's not a, 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 a a current Pira Studio interview to tell his story. And for those that haven't seen it, go check it out. It's actually doing really, really good on YouTube. And it's super I, dope. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. And you like like I said, you tweeted it out. And it's those conversations that are needed to to you know just bring bring awareness to to our culture and to the people that are really kind of cultivating our culture. And you, my friend, are one of those people, man. Like I mean look, dude, I have never had so many requests from so many girls in my life. As soon as I was interviewing you, man, uh, even my nieces, man, they're like, oh, my gosh, you know, so it's really cool to have you here. But I want to know about your journey, your story. You mentioned being born in Mexico City. At what age did you take a liking into acting and decide that this is something that you wanted to do? Uh, Super young, man. So my uh, my grandfather uh, was sort of an actor, an actor in, in, you know, in the golden age of, of Mexican cinema. And he... You know, he didn't really necessarily break out or anything like that, but he really enjoyed being with performers and, and actors and like that. And he got a, together a group of actors and started uh, dubbing films. So he was one of the first people to translate movies from English to the Mexican market. And uh, that's the company that he had. And then my dad took that over, you know, years later. And so I grew up going to voiceover studios and seeing um, actors give old projects, you know, series like Friends or, or, or movies like um, uh, Waterworld, you know, um, and seeing these actors give new life in a different language to a completely new audience. So I, I grew up a little bit uh, seeing that. Not that I knew that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a zoologist when I was a little kid. Um, and then it wasn't until 
I moved to the United States again, eight, nine years old that my mom put me in a, a theater program, just sort of like, she always saw me doing like little skits and songs and things like that for the family at Christmas. And she thought that, you know, um, she knew that I was a very outgoing kid and she didn't want to see that stifled just because I moved to a new country and I was a little, I was being a little shy and I was being a little bit like, Oh, I don't know. Let me ease into it. My mom was like, no, no, come on, kid. You're, you're out there all the time. So she put me in this theater class. And from there, um, yeah, man, that, that I, I caught the bug. And from there on, I, it wasn't until like literally my senior year in high school where I, where I decided to, this is what I'm going to do. But since then, since I was eight, nine years old, I started like had the bug of storytelling, of watching movies in a, in a different way of um, being very attracted to uh, characters. You know, the, 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 the more, the more an actor morphed themselves into something else and were able to do that realistically, the, that was the stuff that attracted me. You know, when I went to see a movie or, or a play, it wasn't, and it, it was never really like the the leads. The leads were very interesting, and they drove the story forward. But it was these side characters, you know, the ones that like brought life to to to, to the world that these that these other other actors were were inhibiting. That that uh, yeah, that's I think that that's where I caught the bug, just watching and observing. Was there a specific you know role that that popped out to you at an early age that you're like that that inspired me? That that was a role right there that kind of got me wanting to pursue this or really take it serious you know yeah uh take it serious it was when i decided that i was gonna get into this because when you talk about acting with a lot of people they say oh when you're you know rich and famous you know so there's this there's this expectation that if you go into this career you're a failure if you're not rich and famous so it was when a lot of my friends we're starting to go into theater and this and that. And, and, you know, went to New York to study theater um, that I learned the concept of a working actor, an actor who can make a living doing what he loves um, without necessarily having these huge acclimates. Like they can pay their rent, they can pay their mortgage, they can pay for their car payments, they can pay for their kids. Um, they can live a normal, comfortable life doing what they love that's for me the click i was like great awesome so so you mean if i'm not brad pitt that doesn't mean i'm a failure right so when i had that like realization of like yeah it's 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 a working profession that's what that's what kind of made me ease into it where it was just focus on your work work hard don't worry about the acclimates don't worry about getting famous don't worry about getting rich everything will come at its own time uh, and even if you don't get to that height, if you have a body of work and you're consistently getting paid for that work, dude, you made it. You're successful. You're a successful working actor, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and as for later on in life, I, I started, you know, um, revisiting, if you want, the classics and, and, and actors um, that you really look up to. But when I was a kid, I loved Eugenio Derbez and Jim Carrey. Those two guys, for me... Uh, you know, you might not consider them the thespian masters, <laughs> but it takes bravery to do what they do, to just say, I'm going to go 150%, you know, and if the director wants to bring me down, they'll bring me down, but they go for it. You see Liar Liar, you see uh, Dumb and Dumber, you see Ace Ventura, you see um, everything with Okay, No, That Abyss when he, was a, when, when, when he was doing sketch comedy in Mexico. These characters are so out there that you really got to have you got to be brave to, to, to pull something like that off. Man, that's awesome, man. You know, and, and I, I think one thing that you said earlier in the conversation about, you know, it wasn't always the lead actor that attracted you to, to, to the love of like acting and wanting to get into this. You know, obviously right now you're on a hit series uh, on Netflix called On My Block, which, by the way, man, sensational work, man. I, I've watched the whole entire three seasons and um, – you 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 really really man bro i'm i'm not just saying this to oversell but you are doing a <laughs> job on there uh embodying uh, embodying that character because the character on the show for those that aren't familiar with the show i highly recommend you guys to check it out it's on netflix it's called on my block you play a character named spooky now i know that in in acting it's it's hard to not get stereotyped 
you know, where when, you know, you're a Mexican-American actor, you're a Mexican actor, they automatically want to, you know, put you in as a cholo. But you play a cholo on the show. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and you do a damn good job of it. Uh, one scene in specific that really popped to me is the, the scene with, with Spooky and his father. And, and and to me, man, you, oh my gosh, I watched it. I was like, bro, great, great work. Let's talk about the show. Let's talk about it, yeah. it being a hit, man. Let's talk about, I mean, you, there's no way to predict this because obviously you talk about acting. You talk about being a working actor. You talk about the grind of, you know, I hate to use the term making it, but the term of getting a break and mm -hmm. becoming mainstream. This show, in a lot of ways, has become that. And it's a yeah. great flow for you. What are your thoughts on the show and, and what it's become? Yo, uh, playing Oscar has been one of the biggest blessings of my life. Um, it, it, again, it, it, in a way, it opened up my, my Chicano third eye. <laughs> you know, uh, it, um, right before I did that, that, that show, I was in a play called The Mexican Trilogy. Uh, by Evelina Fernandez, uh, and uh, it was down. You know, we did it down here in downtown LA. And while I was doing that um, that play, I started really owning up to identifying myself as a Chicano. You know, realizing that this this idea of like ni de aquí ni de allá. You know, I was, I had already lived in the United States long enough so that I didn't fit in necessarily in Mexico, but I was still a foreigner in this country and people, whether I wanted to be treated with that a certain way or not, or, or, or I was or wasn't, there's a large group of people that do look at me as other. That's their, that's their prerogative. You know, it's, 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 it's what they do. Um, but I am part of this culture, right? And I started, you know, listening to not only mariachi music, but like um, specifically rap out of East L.A. and hip hop and not not just hip hop in general, but specifically Mexican-American hip hop, you know. Um, and when I got the audition for On My Block, you know, I remember when my mom sent me to or when I went to New York and I was studying there and, she, and I was going to be an actor. And my mom was just like, just don't play any drug dealers. Don't play any cartels. Don't do anything that's a negative stereotype, right? Oh, man. <laughs> when I get this audition, I'm like, the first thing I thought was like, damn, another cholo role. Because by then, I had been auditioning for cholos a year, you know, two years or something like that. I read the sides, and the scene that I, had, that I read was um, when I'm with my brother on the beach, you know, from that first season. And it just, it gave a different dimension. Yeah, this guy's the big bad. Yes, he's, he's, he's running shit. Yes, he's, you know, he's, uh, he's spooky. But he's Oscar Diaz with a story and a background. And there's a reason why he went into this. Um, and, it's, and it wasn't necessarily for, for glory. It was for protection. It was for love. It was a different angle that I personally hadn't seen. Um, and then I also had this 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 conversation with um, with one of the actors that was in that was in the other play of this guy is written as a Mexican. Uh, I know plenty of fantastic Cuban, Puerto Rican, Dominican, uh, Argentinian actors, you know, but they would bring their own flavor, their story, you know. Um, just a very quick example, someone from the Chicano movement might idolize Che Guevara when someone from Cuba would be like, are you kidding me? How can you, how can you relate with that? Uh, you know, some call him a revolutionary, other call him, you know, a terrorist. So me playing Oscar, I bring the, the, the history, the, the, the manteca, <laughs> the, you know, the, the seasoning from Mexico. And I thought that that was very important for, for, for it to be shown and seen and that it didn't just become a generalized Hispanic guy, that it was a specifically Mexican-American guy. And when I went in there and I, and, I, and, I, and I did the audition and I came out, I called my mom and I said, yo, I auditioned for this children. And my mom was like, no, come on, mijo, like for real? Like, can't you be like Prince Charming or this or that? And I'm like, mom, these are... 
these are our stories. You know, I know that you like to keep me in a certain bubble and, and you want, you know, like every, every family wants their kids to do better and better and better and, you know, move up that social ladder. Um, but these are prevalent stories and I haven't seen a story been told this particular way. And I don't know, I, I felt the responsibility uh, right from the audition, even before booking it. I felt a responsibility of playing this three-dimensionally, uh, sucking up as much as I could from, from, the, from the words, you know. Um, even if I only have three lines in the scene, I want those three lines to be just soaked in, 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 in context so that it doesn't feel like this is like just some random gangbanger, you know, so that it tells a story of a community and of a struggle, so. Wow, I mean, what do you what do you make of the success of the show? Because I know no one could have <laughs> it be as big as it is and for people to catch on to your character as much as they have, because, you know, uh, it, is, <laughs> it is, it has become a breakout role, it really has. Yeah, it's cool, it's, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not 100% super uh, a fan of, of the, of the, I, I like people, I, my biggest compliment was when people don't recognize me. And then there's a moment of like, oh, that's you, dude. You know, that's like, for me, I'm like, awesome. The other stuff, it, it sometimes feels a little bit invasive, you know, in, in your personal life. But I understand that that comes along with uh, a very positive, which is the success of a show that people are watching the show. That means that not a lot of, not only are people watching the show, but really loving the show and understanding the show. And they see a character like, like Oscar, like spooky. And they think twice, you know, they see it. Then now they might see someone who's just wearing baggy shorts and a shirt and not immediately associate him with his gang banging. Like, nah, man, maybe he's just wearing something comfortable, bro. You know? And that, that they have um, a complexity to them, you know, uh, a, th a three dimensionality to them that is not just what's put on them. So I think that the show does that very well. And the popularity of that show uh, makes sure that it's like broad across, across every, I was in uh, two years, yeah, two, not, not this Christmas, the previous Christmas, I was in Spain and I got, um, I got recognized in Spain, which was for me, that was like, yo, on my blocks real. Like getting recognized in LA, I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> getting recognized in Spain, bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That was that's that's when I knew that it's like, yo, this is hitting, this is hitting next level. I, I had actually seen a story, if I'm not mistaken, that you were out with your with your parents one day and that somebody had a double take and they're like, oh, that's you, that's you. And then you're like, hey, you could approach me, you could approach me. But <laughs> I think that is the mark of a great act. And I think that's a, a testament to to your body of work and to the fact that you take your craft serious to be able to embody a character that on the surface looks nothing like you. Is the mm -hmm. complete opposite of who you are, but you can tap in and bring that character to life. And I feel you've done a, a sensational job again. And I gotta give you props. The fans are the fa the fans were clamoring, they wanted me to ask you, you know. What's up with season four? You know, uh, yeah. like that. That that's that's a uh, you know an FAQ. You know, yeah. Uh, I don't know of a particular green light or start date or anything like that. I just know that the creators have talked to us and said that they they really want to. So now it's sort of just waiting on Netflix and when you know filming can resume because we shoot it here in in LA. So when can we shoot in in Los Angeles with everything that's going on? Um, I know that there's a plan for season four, but I don't know much after that. I'd love to go back. I'd love to go back at least one more time to, to, to sort of really explore and, and, and wrap up uh, Oscar's story. Well, you know, I know that there's there's um, a lot of people that know you from the show, you know, but you were doing this way before that. You mentioned, you know, you, were, you mentioned, you know, being, you know, doing plays. Uh, so like, how long would you say from the time that you started to the time that that role, you know, hit Netflix, that you had been actively acting, taking acting gigs, small roles, whatever, whatever you could get, your, you know, your, however you could get it in, you know? Uh, 10 years. Wow. 10 years. Yeah. So let's see. I booked it. 
when I was 26, 26 or 27. Um, and that was in high school around the time when I was like, this is what I'm going to do. So all of my electives and things like that started going more towards, you know, uh, scene study, drama, musical theater, uh, things like that. Um, and then right out, right out of, uh, high school, I went to a conservatory in New York for a theater. Um, and then I, I moved to back to Los Angeles. Uh, I was living in Florida when I was in going to high school. And, um, when I came back to California, my, my idea was to go to UCLA and finish up a theater, uh, a theater major while I was doing my transferring or my, my classes over at Santa Monica college trying to transfer over to UCLA. I realized that film is, is really what I wanted to be doing and not just, uh, in front of the cameras. I wanted to not direct, but produce. I love producing. I love getting a team together and, and grabbing a story and from, from the beginning to the end where I am sort of like broad strokes and let every individual artist do the best thing that they can do. Um, so then I decided to go to film school uh, and I went to the New York Film Academy with, here that, that in Los Angeles and I had a great opportunity of shooting a lot of stuff in, at the Universal Studios back lot. And there I met uh, Alfredo Ibarra, who is uh, essentially my business partner. And uh, he's a director, and together we started Blank Films back in 2013. Well, 2011, 2013 is when we like incorporated, and we started shooting music videos, and uh, we shot our own feature film for um, Cine Latino with like an unbelievably ultra, ultra, mega low budget. But we're like, hey, someone's gonna give us money to make a movie. We're gonna complain that we don't have enough movie, uh, enough money, or are we gonna make this movie? So. We made the movie, you know, and all of this while I'm still taking acting classes, improv classes, um, auditioning, auditioning, auditioning. I booked this Coke commercial here. I booked that Wells Fargo commercial there. Um, and it was just a constant grind. I, at no point that I feel disencouraged. In fact, I felt like, OK, this is this is my life. My life is going to be continuously trying to create and get paid for it, not exuberantly paid for it, but just to, you know, move on to the next thing, move on to the next thing. And when I, I'm so happy that I booked on my block at the age that I did, because I already knew the game. There wasn't like, it was obviously on a different level, especially with the, with the exposure that it had, but I already knew how to behave myself on set. You know, I already knew how to put in the work. Um, I already knew to not like let things go to my head, you know? Uh, I had already worked with other actors and, and, and performers who it works for them, but they hold, they hold themselves with this. I'm so much better and more important than anything else here that I'm like, no matter what I do, I am not going to be that on set, you know? <laughs> yeah. So. I, I think it's important. I think it's timing. You know, uh, I know a lot of people always want to think about right now rather than the right time. And you, you learn the etiquette as you go on and you mentioned, you know, learning the etiquette of knowing how to be prepared, knowing how to, to conduct yourself, knowing how to be prepared for the opportunity that when it, when it presents itself. And I think that 10 year journey to get to that point uh, was in a lot of ways, like that was just paying your dues, man. It's tuition. You know what I mean, that's the, 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 that's what you had to do. But I will say this, what are some of the hardships and some of the struggles that you endured on your way to, 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 the, to this point that you're at now where, you know, I feel like, and I'm not just saying this because you're on the show, man. I really, really genuinely feel you're on the cusp of superstardom, you know, and as much as, you know, the, the attention might be somewhat intrusive, you have become a little bit of a Latino heartthrob, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey we're, we're tired of Mario Lopez. You know what I mean? That's cool. <laughs> Nah, nah, Mario's still cool, but you know, we got, we got, we got yeah. you now too, man. And also Diego, you know, Diego, uh, you know, another breakout star, you know, uh, Diego is going to be Tom Cruise. Give that fool. That guy is so hardworking. You don't understand that kid's going to be the next Tom Cruise. He's, he's, he's crazy. Yeah. Like the dedication that that kid has. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, that's what I'm saying. So what are some of the hardships and the struggles that you would say that you endured to get to that point, you know, where, where now you're on the cusp of, of potential superstardom and representing 
a culture uh, that that's in dying need of representation on this level, you know, like it, it, at least on that next level, you know? Yeah. Uh, one of the hardships definitely is uh, a bit of getting typecast. You know, uh, I went out to so many commercials and I would only book the commercials that spoke Spanish. You know, I would do the, the Spanish version of a lot of commercials. And uh, it's interesting because I, I feel incredibly blessed to be here. And I, you know, I don't like to hold myself down or hold other people accountable or, or responsible for like my success or not. But you do notice the very thin line of opportunities for um, marginalized communities, but be that, you know, uh, black, be that Mexican, be that Asian, Indian, um, they're either the sidekick or their stories are so much about only their culture. You know, you rarely just see a show like, I don't know, I'm just gonna say uh, The Big Bang Theory where one of the cast members or three of the cast members are Hispanic, but it's not just like they're walking around being the token Mexican, you know? Um, so there is a little bit of, um, that's, that's a little bit of a struggle. You know, the more you do it, the more you do it, you think that things are going to open up. You think things are going to open up and they do open up, but they, they, there's still these, there's still certain stereo, stereotypical, clutches that hold on to them you know um that's a, that's a constant you know uh i think another thing that you know this this whole year uh because of covid and, and whatnot i uh, i don't know if it's going to be forever but i've been uh sober so no drinking or smoking weed which is something that i did my entire 20s um and i think that uh that was that was a struggle as well um, you know, being 21 or turning 20 and, and then just being in the industry and, uh, this idea that to get through it, you have to be hammered the entire time, you know? It's, so you have like either the health nuts or the, or like just the drinkers. And I definitely went through the drinking stage. Um, and, uh, that didn't help, you know, the, the moments where it got hard instead of, buckling down and you know doing a little bit better i would just grab the bottle um so i'm i'm happy that i've kind of like transitioned out of that um but i think that that's a struggle that a lot of people don't necessarily mention um you know what you do to cope with not getting the job you know i want i want to say this and i want to give you a perspective before we go on to the next thing that i want to talk about in regards to you know being typecast you know you mentioned that you mentioned some of those hardships. I believe in 2021, especially, we truly can control our narrative in regards to uh, content creation. You know, uh, one thing that stood out to me was the the director that produced the um, Bel Air trailer on YouTube that went viral, that eventually caught Will Smith's attention, which was like a drama version of Bel Air, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Mm -hmm. Now it's being picked up as a full series for Peacock, NBC or whatnot, I believe or HBO, one yeah. but I feel like, you know, and maybe it's because I've been on Clubhouse lately, you know, I've been on the app Clubhouse and everybody's on there kind of giving their perspective on what's wrong with, you know, uh, you know, our culture specifically, you know, Lat Latinos and Mexican Americans. And, you know, I just came to the conclusion like, hey, you know, we have, you know, firepower. You mentioned having a production team where you can, we can legitimately produce our own content and, publish it whenever we want on, on these platforms. Why do you think people don't do that more often? You know, like, you know, you as an actor, for example, you know, you have, you had a production team or you have a production team you mentioned, you know, doing music videos. Did, did it ever occur to you like, Hey man, I'm not getting the role that I want. I'm going to create the role that I want and I'm going to film it myself and I'm going to put it out myself. And even if it only gets a thousand views on YouTube, I'm going to roll the dice and bet on myself. Have you yeah. ever, what, why, what do you, what do you, what, how do you see that? Yeah. Uh, for me, it's, uh, I, I am much more interested in, uh, the story and the narrative than I am about my own portrayal. 
like me. So there's like two, two Julio's that exist. There's the, the, the Julio actor and the Julio actor is cool with letting other people give him opportunities. Hey, I want you to be Pete Estudillo. Hey, I want you to be Oscar. Hey, I want you to be Batman, you know, like, cool, give me things to play. And then I'll do my best to do that. When you put me in the, how can you do your own narrative? I'm usually the last person that I think of. I'm like, oh, I would like to be a surgeon. And then I write a story around me being a surgeon. Rather, I'm like, hey, I heard a, a story about this really cool Hispanic surgeon. Let me build the team. Let me go get the writer that's going to write the best film. Who can we cast in this? You know, and if the conversation comes up, hey, Julio, why don't you play? It's like, is there anybody else that can play this? No. OK, then I'll play. You know, um, I I'm, I'm writing a, a cartoon series right now uh, called Brujas with uh, the actor who plays Ricky Vela on Selena. His name is Hunter, Hunter Espana. And when we're writing this cartoon, uh, a conversation that we always have is that uh, where do we want to fit in this narrative? And I think that there are plenty of shows that are not only needed, uh, but are essential that put these, um, these issues and these problems right in your face. You know, uh, a show called like, uh, I may destroy you. Uh, I think it's called on, on HBO where it, like it, it pushes, uh, sexuality and assault and, 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 uh, gender fluidity. And it puts it right in your face because that's what it needs to be. And, and people need to feel uncomfortable and understand that these stories are happening at the same time. I think that we can have stories that are of marginalized communities without necessarily it being about the marginalized community, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So right now we're, we're, we're doing the balance right now in this cartoon of having the, the cast be entirely, not only female, but Hispanic. Um, but then making it about the witchcraft and the brujeria that they do and touching here or there on the fact that they're Mexican, but not making it so that it's so heavy so that audiences can get used to just seeing a Mexican family without it being like, yeah, amplified uh, times 10, you know what I mean? Like, like where it's yeah. amplified times 10, because I, I agree with you. And what, I, what, what I'll chime in and I'll say is that the reason I say about controlling the narrative is because truth be told, man, I've been extremely inspired as of late. You know, I, I, I have a production team that I work with out here. You know, we do obviously this talk show that we're doing virtually. Mm -hmm. We actually have an in-studio production. And I've always, I've just been thinking on that, man, there's so many stories that I want to tell for the people that I admire, you know, whether it be pro boxers that I, that I, that I'm affiliated with, or it's actors that I'm meeting or entertainers that I'm like, I almost want to create a role for you so people could see how damn good you really are. You know what I mean? Because sometimes people don't understand it, but I just feel like because we can control that narrative and because we have the ability to just say one day, Hey, you know what? Julio has a, a production team. Let's go out there and just create our, our own stories. Uh, mm -hmm. Not just within our culture. I'm talking about in general uh, stories that I feel can can be told. But I, I was I really appreciate your perspective on that. Real quick, I know that we're we're talking away, man. Selena Netflix series, man. You get casted as Pete Ostevio. Uh I think you know. And, and anybody that's Mexican American, Mexican period, Latino in general, you know about Selena. Going into that role when it was presented to you, what were your initial thoughts and? Like how, how, I mean, how much did, how much of a fan of Selena were you going into the series? That's, you know, I wanted to know uh, about that. Yeah. So Selena was like a name that, that rang true, like Pedro Infante, you know, like it's, it's just a name that is in the ethos of, of, of these, uh, Mexican American gods, you know, um, but my 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 dad's not huge into music, and my mom really liked um, Creedence Clearwater Revival and the Beatles and things like that. Um, so growing up, I knew of Selena, but I didn't really know her stuff. I knew her more through my cousins and stuff like that. You know, like my cousins when when my parents would go to sleep and, and the real party started, then Selena would turn up. So I associated Selena with like liveliness and a, and a, and a youthfulness that my parents who are a little bit older. 
uh, didn't have. So when I booked the show and I immersed myself, I became such a fan of not only Selena, but the Los Dinos, all of them, you know, understanding that it was a group and it's not, you know, you think of Selena and you think of um, something like uh, Beyonce or just like a singular, uh, a singular act, but it was, it was a group, you know, and each one of them brought so much, like, I wish I would have had that interview uh, with Pete yeah, before I started. It was so funny, man. A friend of mine was like, hey, you know, because I had interviewed AB and the interview had started getting real, a lot of rave reviews right around the time the series hit. But I had already mm -hmm. interviewed a month prior. So it was like an interview that was just sitting there that just caught fire because we went pretty deep, man. We did an hour and 45 and we just yeah. had a really, really great conversation. And I have a relationship with AB. So we were able to, to have that conversation in a way that I don't think he was able to, to do with anybody else. Mm -hmm. Like, why don't you go get an interview with Pino Studio? Cause I was trying to get an interview with Suzette and I was like, I didn't even think about that, man. And I'm a fan of Pete, you know, I was, uh -huh. you, you watched the interview. So I, I grew up, you know, in a, in an independent record shop. My mom owned an independent record shop, Tex-Mex music. His music was mm -hmm. part of my, my childhood. So when I finally get in contact with him and, and we had, we had a prep conversation prior to doing the interview, I was just like, man, your story really needs to be told. And I'm so glad that, you know, in the series that people are starting to see, how much of a role that everybody played in the success of the megastar that is mm -hmm. that is Selena. Uh, but I guess with you, I, the question I have in, in regards to playing Pete, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I believe that I saw this in a few different interviews that leading into the series, nobody actually was in contact with the people that they were playing, correct? Yeah, nobody, nobody. Nobody knew. And then when we asked if we could get in contact, the uh, the producer, I mean, Suzette's one of the producers, so we just kind of took it as like, this is her marching orders, even though I don't know if they were or not, um, that they said, we want you to, you, we want you to read these, these characters and we want you to bring you to them. You know, we don't want you to be carbon copies of these people. You know, we want you to be actors, which is what you do. So in, in, in like, we're going to give you all of the information that you need. Um, and so don't try to reach out. Don't try to contact the, the other people. Um, and then just do what we kind of tell you to do. Um, and so I just trusted that that process. You know, I obviously I watched as many interviews as I could find on, you know, Pete. Um, more than anything, I, I watched his like relentless energy on stage. <laughs> that guy, it, 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 like he just goes, you know, <laughs> he just goes and goes and goes. And so, uh, you know, I knew that I wasn't his height and, you know, we had, I, I can sing, but he's got, you know, he's got a different voice. So all I could do was instead of trying to imitate him, you know, step by step is how can I blend who I am with who he is and, 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 one of the biggest things that I could that that I that I got was reading the lyrics that he wrote and emulating who he f might have felt like on the inside, and then just projecting that as much as possible. You know, now that you know, obviously leading into the role, you couldn't be in contact with him. Have y'all been in contact since the the series has been out? No, nah, man, just like random little <laughs> Instagram, like "What's up, brother?" like on yeah. public, but no. I'm kind of intimidated, man. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm a little intimidated by hitting that floor. Man, y'all gotta connect at some point, man. That, that, that's awesome. So let's talk about the success of the series, the Selena series, number one across the you know, across the globe when it came out. That's two, man. That's two hit series that you're part of on Netflix, man. It has to feel <laughs> good. Uh, what were your thoughts seeing the success? Obviously, I mean, you know. It's really no surprise, to be honest with you. We, we knew that the series was going to be massive. And I feel that a lot of people were really critical of the series going into it because, because of the movie, because of the original mm -hmm. movie came out in 1997 uh, with Jennifer Lopez. And by the way, Jennifer Lopez did a sensational job playing Selena. Salute to her, John Seller, the whole entire cast. Those guys were fantastic with what they did and what they created. But this is a series that's different. You know, it's a, mm -hmm. continuous, a continuation, a backstory of the origin of the group, the origin of her success. Uh, 
what are your thoughts on on just the success of it the the response the the fact that did you see the meme you know from from spooky to <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude that's great that was i i laughed um uh i have um I try to have as little ego as possible. Um, so I got, you know, my cousin saying like, yo, they did you dirty. Or like, can you believe it? This. And then when I finally saw the meme, I laughed. I thought that was like, that's hilarious. That's great. Or when uh, Netflix said your, your haircut before quarantine and your haircut after quarantine and that they did spooky and, and Pete. I was like, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, from, the way that we filmed it, you know, the, 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 it was kind of like a really long movie. You know, we were, everyone was down in Rosarito and they had us pretty much quarantined in for the second half because of obviously COVID and everything. So we became super tight, super close, you know, all of us. And we, 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 you know, hung out together. We, we, we partied together. We, we sang together and it, and it became like this, really like Los Dinos, you know, we, we really, you know, connected like, like band members. And so seeing everyone's hard work, seeing how much Christian put into it, you know, there was moments when I would be on stage and I was just like, this is crazy. Like we're, we're Los Dinos right now. You know, um, we were going at it. We, 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 there was days where we, we would perform in front of, um, hundred plus people, you know, and then they would, give us the energy between takes uh, Christian would sometimes ask sound if, Hey, can you just do play, do the playback and we'll perform for the audience to get them amped up between takes. So the audience was there with us, uh, you know, encouraging us and giving us energy. So when, uh, when it finally came out and people were calling, you know, calling me or texting me, it's like, yo, like the concerts, that's crazy. Like, were people quiet? This and that I was like, no, nah, man, those concerts were, they felt like real concerts, bro. Yeah. You know, like people were cheering and, and the energy. So there was all of this energy. And I think you're a hundred percent right that the movie in a way has now rose colored haze over the story that is Selena, you know, now J Lo's portrayal and that film is so iconic in people's minds that it seems like they might have forgotten that that the same as us is based on another person. You know, they were, I feel like maybe people were expecting us to do the, the J Lo, the story of J Lo's Selena, not Selena, you know? Um, but the biggest compliment that we got was from A, B, and Suzette when we finally, well, we got like a general call with them. And uh, Suzette said, you know, I remember f first watching it and like having that, no, you know what? I think I like the movie better. And then she watches the whole series. And then she, she like, she realized like it was, it was first of all, even though she read all the scripts and she was part of the production, when she finally watched it, she's just like, that's my life that's my life up there. You know, it's not just a glimpse. It's not just an hour and a half, you know, cut in with 10 minutes of Suzette here and there. Like Noemi brings it in the series, you know? And then um, when, when AB also is just like, when he, he has his interview with, with, with um, Gabe who plays him, he, he, he says, you guys, you know, Christian's energy is the energy that I felt from my sister all the time. So I'm just like, these are the people that were there. You know, these are the people that these lives are based upon. And they're telling us that our, our show, our series invokes emotions in them. And it reminds them of the time when they were there. Like what bigger, what bigger compliment, you know? And then obviously there's going to be people that love it. There's going to be people that criticize it, but people are talking about it. Right. Absolutely, man. And you know what? Pete himself said that, you know, uh, you know, he, he took a while to watch it. You know, he said when he finally watched it, he watched it by himself. You know, it brought, brought it brought back a lot of emotion. And he told me off the record, you know, this was the best representation. And this is coming from him, you know. Mm -hmm. and of course, you know, like he said in the interview, he's always aspired to be tall and handsome. And 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so uh, he, zero complaints in that department right now, you know. Uh, but, you know, I, I do want to say, uh, again, you know, I, I'm a fan of the series personally, you know. And mm-hmm. I, I was invested into the series because, you know, obviously I know AB, but the show was great, you know. And I, and I want people to watch it with an open mind and understand that this is the origin and, and, it, and there's so many more layers to Selena. So I know that's mm-hmm. a tell of the movie, which again, iconic. And that's part of, you know, people's collection. It's part of like, you know, like I say, there's a handful of Mexican American movies or Latino movies that are part of the collection. That's one of the five that's in the collection, you know? Uh, but the series is, is great. Uh, and, and I do have one request. I really would love, 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 love to see you, Diego and Gabe on a, on a project together, because I am a huge fan of, Gabe, you know, I was a fan of him and actually Lowrider. He did the Lowrider film. And yeah, I, didn't, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't realize that it was him until later. I was like, oh, wow. Like, I was I was lost in it. But I would love for you guys to do something together down the line, you know? Especially and me and Gabe have been... Yeah, <laughs> no, me and Gabe have been talking about that. He's, he's, he's also like-minded in the sense that he's not just thinking about his acting career. He's like, you know, where can I invest my money? And where I want to invest my money is in films and projects and julio we're gonna do this and we're gonna work on that together so i wouldn't put it past him man he's he's got he's got ideas for sure man so what's what's next for you man outside of on my blog outside of season two selena netflix series uh what what can we expect from you and what's 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 you know what's the future looking like for you uh you know uh grinding dude still uh auditioning it's the same old thing you know trying to book that next project um, on the side. You know, I, I, I love to, sh- you know, do shorts and music videos and, and sketches or just for me, this is, this is my life. There's no, there's no necessary, there's not necessarily a step that I'm like reaching for. It's more of like every day, what can I do that's creative, you know? Um, and, uh, yeah, so for me, there's, there is one project that I'm trying to sort of get off the ground that I think would be really interesting. Um, Juan Catalan, do you know who he is? I'm not familiar with Juan Catalan. Yeah, he, uh, there's a, there's a documentary, um, on Netflix called The Long Shot. And, uh, it's a story of Juan who was, uh, wrongfully accused of murder. And he was acquitted, among other things, but one of the pieces of evidence was that he was at a Dodger game when the murder was actually taking place, and he was there with his daughter. And uh, in the show, Curb Your Enthusiasm, you see him in the background, and he comes and he sits down with his daughter, um, and that's what was able to, like, acquit him from the murder, right? And uh, I watched the documentary. I I loved it. I thought it was so interesting, just, you know, what the lawyer went through, what he went through, the fact that he got off because Curb Your Enthusiasm was shooting at Dodger Stadium that day. Um, so I, I hit up Juan and we might be we might be working on a little film together. Um, so that's something that I'm putting together. And uh, it's interesting trying to trying to get this story uh, written up uh, because I want it to be. fun um even though it is about murder and incarceration and things like that i want it to be a a movie that's accessible to people so that they can go and watch it and not only feel uh a sense of oof there's things that we need to fix in our society but also look at how positive this guy was through the entire through the entire process you know like the, the 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 good energy and the positivity and how he grabbed this really horrible thing that happened to him and he molded it and turned it into the person that he is now you know so uh about that it's for me i'm not i'm not putting the gas pedal on this one i want to find the right writer i want to find the right director I want to make sure that the studio that 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 shoots this, whether it be Netflix, whether it be Paramount, whether it's an independent thing, you know, with Screen Gems or, or something else, you know, whoever, however, and whoever gets this done, I want it to be done with a labor of love that people put, yo, they put, they put time, they put effort, they put money into it, but most of all, they put integrity in it. You know, they didn't just write up a quick CSI version of this movie and throw it up to make a couple bucks to to, to cash in on on the 
uh, Latinx movement that's taking over Hollywood right now. It's it's not about yes, we got to make money because it's that's how that's how we survive. But it's not just about making money, man. It's about getting good stories out there, like you said. Yeah, absolutely. You know, having an impact, you know, and and, and leaving a legacy above all. Mm-hmm. You know? And look, man, I, I look forward to, to seeing your story unfold. I, I appreciate you giving me your time to be able to tell your story. And above all, you know, I want to say this again, you know, like, thank you, man. Thank you so much for just taking time to acknowledge my, my media platform, but also lend your name and your time to this because as Latinos, we should support one another. And it's not just about being Latino. It's just in general, people as a whole should learn to support one another. And <laughs> for you to yeah. take time out of your day to say, you know what, I, I, I not only want to give you this interview, but I, I want to make sure that, you know, I do my part to help you out and build your platform. Thank you, man. To me. And it speaks volumes to your character. And, you know, I know at times uh, our culture in specific, you know, has a tendency to, to magnify whether or not you're not <laughs> right. Oh, you don't, you're not, you're not speaking Spanish enough or you're this or you're that, but uh, you know, keep, keep making us proud, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. You're representing well. You, I, I do feel that, you know, as long as you stay the course, man, you're on the cusp of superstar, brother. You know what I mean? Like you have two series on Netflix right now at the same time that are performing at an extremely high level. Not many people can say that. And you're a fan no. on both of those series, man. So you should be extremely proud of you. And us as a culture, we're proud of you, man. So thank, oh, thank you, man. Yeah, I am. I'm super excited. Uh, I am. I'm like I said, I'm, I'm not le- taking my eyes off the ball. I haven't made it. I don't think I'll ever in the, in the sense of the word, make it because no matter what level I get to, I know that I'm just going to want to keep going and going and going and going. And uh, again, I'm, I'm so happy uh, that I've been able to um, grow, like I said, grow into my Chicanoness. And now that I, to be at an age where I can speak on it and represent it informed and not just throw up the flag and not know what it means, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, look, I look forward to seeing all your future projects. Look forward to seeing season four on my blog. Look forward to seeing season two, Selena Netflix series. And I look forward to seeing your independent projects as well, what you do. I know you talk about music videos. I'll ask you here in a second off the record. But uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, look, before I leave, to your fans, you say what, my friend? To my fans, I say, respira, sonríe, y pa' adelante. That's, that's Julio Macias, man. Y'all make sure to follow him on Instagram and on Twitter. He followed me on Twitter, man, so I'd have made it. I made it already, bro. <laughs> All right, man.